Thanks, Tony. Welcome everybody to our bilingual education quarterly webinar. I'm Patty Finnegan and um, we'll get rolling here. We wanna make sure everybody can hear us and participate. Um, just doing a quick sound check. Um, one, and uh, of course, Tony got already got confirmation on that. And um, we'll go to the next slide here. And uh, just a reminder, the way to participate is through the chat in this webinar format. Um, you wouldn't be able to speak, but certainly um, please ask your questions um, in the chat box there. And all the slides are available on our Migrant and Bilingual Ed web, uh, website, and that's linked on that per, um, earlier slide. And we also have closed captions that you'll see at the bottom there. And um, the OSPI vision, mission, and values, uh, we like to uh, take a moment for you to take, uh, take a peek at this, but it's really about transforming K-12 education and closing opportunity gaps for our student groups that have been historically underserved. And uh, next slide, please. And then our equity statement. All right, moving on to our uh, weeded transition timeline and for standards, professional learning and assessments. And next slide, please. It's a team effort here. <laughs> and uh, most important here, our land acknowledgement. So I'm coming to you from Olympia and Olympia is um, in the traditional and ancestral lands of the Squaxin Island people. And um, their language that they're preserving and re revitalizing is Lashutsi. And they have an incredible library that's linked on this page if you'd like to go check it out, Library and Museum. Um, and next slide, please. And a policy update. So in addition to the many changes that we're um, moving into as we transition to the WIDA English Language Development Standards, um, Professional Learning and Assessments, uh, our incoming kindergartners for 2021-22 will all be assessed with the WIDA screener for kindergarten. And um, we will no longer do the early screening of entering kindergarten students. So as you know, for many years, we've allowed the screening to begin May 1st, and uh, we will no longer be doing that uh, because the WIDA screener for kindergarten is uh, very sensitive to development. And as you all know, those, you know, those late four-year-old, early five-year-olds, they're doing a lot of changing, um, and you can see it month by month. So the uh, WIDA screener for kindergarten can only be given uh, about 30 to no more than 60 days before the first day of school. So policy going forward here or beginning this year is that the screening wouldn't happen before July 1st. So um, the WIDA sc screener for kindergarten has been redeveloped and it will be available in Washington in August. So um, in 2022, you'll be able to start screening in July, but this year it is a little bit of a, a crunch in terms of getting kids screened before school starts. But uh, we just wanna give you warning um, so you can start doing the staffing plan around this for kindergarten screening that would begin in August. And We'll have more information in the next uh, about six to eight weeks about screening, um, the screening for kindergarten, uh, getting the test proctors um, um, trained so they can be ready to do that screening in August. And I'm going to pause there and just see if we have any questions in the chat on that issue. And there's one question here. It says, are we using WIDA screening for all other levels? And yes, 
We are. So um, through this school year, so through June, um, grades first grade through 12, any incoming students uh, would be uh, assessed on the screener. Um, and that would be the, the ELPA 21 screener through June. And then beginning 2021-22 school year, all grade levels are assessed on the WIDA screener. And a uh, question, is that all kindergarten students or just those identified by the home language survey? And yes, these are, um, you only assess uh, students who are possibly eligible English learners. So that the screening is triggered by the home language survey where they, where they identify a language other than English. And a uh, question here, are districts required to screen kindergarten students? So um, when you do your kindergarten early enrollment, uh, kindergarten roundup, uh, part of, you know, one of the required um, documents for enrollment of all students is the home language survey. And looking at a language other than English, so that would be identified through the home language survey. And if that is identified, then that triggers screening. And in the state of Washington, we screen uh, within 10 days of enrollment. So that would be within 10 days of school if you're in the school year. And for kindergarten roundup that's done ahead of the school year. So that would all be done this, this year in August using the WIDA screener for kindergartner for kindergarten. Question, it says, uh, does this include Title III students? And um, so yes, all possible eligible English learners. And um, Title III, uh, you might be re uh, referring to Native American students that may quali qualify under Title III for language and literacy support. And if they are kindergarten, um, you know, they, they may have been in uh, preschool or Head Start programs. So you, you may be able to identify um, or have a process for regist early registration for your entering kindergarten students. And then yes, it would apply. And a uh, question about, do we assess transitional kindergarten? And yes, you do. All the um, rules and policies around screening, uh, so identification and service of eligible English learners apply to transitional kindergarten. So same thing you have in kindergarten applies to traditional, or I'm sorry, transitional kindergarten. Any other questions on that? Okay. And uh, there's some links on this page here if you want to learn more about the WIDA screener. Um, and they explain that there's a, a link to a, it's like a three minute little video where they explain how it's developmentally sensitive and, and how it's been redesigned recently by WIDA. And uh, next slide, please. Um, and I did just um, miss a couple in the Q&A. Uh, there's a question about paper pencil and um, the kindergarten screener is paper pencil. Um, again, that was part of making it more developmentally appropriate. And um, there are a, a, a limited, there's a limited supply of paper pencil screeners that are, that will be available grades one through 12 as well. Uh, because as you all know, we do have situations where in online test is not appropriate for some of our students uh, developmentally, but also if they are um, newly arrived to the United States and have not had access to computers. Okay, and, um, and there's one other question, is this just for students determined as um, qualifying for special education? and multilingual are all students. And again, that's um, screening is determined by the home language survey. 
And um, I encourage you to reach out to your program supervisor that um, it, it, we're di divided up and in, in assigned to districts. So we have Shannon Martin, Amy Ingram, Sue Connolly, and you can always send questions through the, uh, the bilingual um, ed uh, email as well. And we'd love to uh, support you on how to identify and then serve students. And uh, with our transition to WIDA, uh, professional learning is uh, gonna, gonna be rolling out so we can help support you in the transition. And uh, we're gonna be offering um, an OSPI hosted uh, virtual work workshop called the Introduction to the WIDA English Language Development Standards Framework. It's a two hour um, virtual, live virtual, workshop and it's going to be offered over 70 times and that's to accommodate everyone's schedules because we're really offering this to all k-12 educators administrators as well as educator preparation faculty in the state and um, so this will be offered april through september there'll be a couple sessions in september just for folks that might not have been able to catch them earlier We'll also have a self-paced um, asynchronous workshop posted to our website. So for folks who can't make one of the 70 times, they'd be able to go on there and get, um, get the information. And it's an overview of uh, the WIDA English Language Development Standards Framework. So you can um, see where the resources are and start digging into it and preparing uh, to implement the ELD standards in um, August, late August, September when school begins. Uh, we're also offering uh, free clock hours for this uh, workshop and we'll have the dates and registration through PD Enroller and all that will be out uh, very soon through an announcement. And next slide, please. And um, if you did not see our March 19th announcement, it is linked here. And that details the transition to WIDA. So it's the timeline links to additional information about the WIDA um, English language development standards and um, the policy update on the uh, entering kindergarten screening. So please check that out if you haven't seen it. And then also, if you're not on our listserv, please um, sign up for that. And that's linked here. Uh, it's, it's how we do our regular communications with folks. And, and since you're on this webinar, you probably are on that listserv. But um, if you have key people in your district that need this information, if you could encourage them to also sign up. And if you just need a nice little uh, break in the day and smile, um, I encourage you to take a peek at one of our three short videos about the P-12 dual language initiative. And it's um, some filming that was done right before uh, COVID and um, teachers in classrooms with kids and um, hopefully bring some smiles. And thank you for all the work you're doing. Really appreciate everybody. And I'm just checking our chat box to see if there's anything uh, that I've missed on here. And uh, there is one question about um, will OSPI have professional learning for folks who administer the kindergarten screener? And yes, uh, it is, WIDA has their professional learning for all their assessments online. And that will be rolled out here in the next six to eight weeks. We know this is a very uh, difficult time for people as you're doing ELPA 21 annual testing. So, um, but that is, um, it is online. And, um, and then people would go on and, and just take that. You get a certificate indicating that you have done the proctor training, which is an annual requirement. Um, but they've made it accessible, doable, so people can get that training before they give the assessments, whether that be the screener or the annual. 
Thank you, everybody. I'm going to turn this over to Amy. Hi there. This is Amy Ingram, one of your bilingual program supervisors here at OSPI. Um, I am coming to you today from Spokane, and Spokane is in the ancestral and traditional lands of the Spokane tribe. Uh, their native language is Spokane and is a dialect of Interior Salish. Um, I am I'm wondering if we can check in and see if Lance Cisco is here. Um, we're hoping that um, he'll be available to uh, maybe answer some questions about the data dashboard. Lance, are you here? I am here, Amy. Do you want to take a moment to um, tell folks um, about your role at OSPI? Yeah. Um, hi, Ron. I'm Lance Cisco. I am the Director of Achievement Data uh, here at OSPI. My team does a lot with the federal accountability as well as our public reporting and reporting through uh, the district secure portal um, back to districts. So if data are getting reported out publicly or back to districts, um, we likely have a hand in it somewhere. Thank you, Lance. Um, we, I just wanna say we are super grateful to your team for this project, the Title III Data Dashboard. Uh, this is an amazing tool that districts can use to make sure that um, our bilingual children have equitable, equitable opportunities to learn. So um, I'll kind of give a description of the project. So student information and bilingual education are very pleased to launch the new Title III data dashboard. And we are hopeful that this will become a tool to support your instructional planning and program implementation. As you're likely aware, risk indicators validated for the larger population often do not help us to spot risk in a bilingual demographic. The dashboard was designed to provide information related to compliance reporting, as well as critical information you might use to create the rich specialized learning environments that best serve our multilingual learners. And we do sincerely hope that uh, you find this tool helpful. So, First, um, let's talk about how you can find it. So um, you would start um, by finding the EDS login on the OSPI page for the Education Data System Administration. Um, if you have not done so in the past, you would need to use the tab that says Create an Account. And once you log in, you would select View My Applications. And under the Applications list, you will select the Tableau server. First, let's look at how you can find the dashboard when you're in Tableau. Um, you can find the new Title III data dashboard by opening Tableau server. And once inside Tableau, you would type Title III in the search window. And when your search tiles populate, you would find the one that says dashboard. Once inside the dashboard, the display defaults to the main search page. From this page, you can use a series of concentric filters and display options to gather information about your students in any school in your district. Um, there is something I want to point out. Um, be sure to remember that you must set the school name um, to district total if you wish to view data for your whole program. Um, I, I missed that in the beginning and had trouble understanding why it wasn't populating with any information. So, the arrow indicates where you would um, select um, the district total to show your data. Using the tabs on the upper left-hand side, you can view a summary of the data associated with any school in your district for Washington State or for Washington State. This feature solves one of the most frequently asked questions districts have, what are the attributes of my program uh, and my specific demographic? Moving over one more tab, you can access the business rules that were used to produce the data available in the dashboard. This is another frequently asked question, and we're excited that student information was able to put this in one easy to find location. So now let's uh, walk through finding one of our most valuable data displays. 
Um, those of you who know me know that I'm passionate about the risk indicators that have been validated for our bilingual students. Um, because I believe that we cannot close an achievement gap that we can't see. And so being able to spot risk is, in my opinion, is a, a matter of equity. Um, so we're going to look at whether or not you can see a pattern of stagnation that leads to long-term enrollment. And I, I don't need to tell most of you because you're experts in the field, but in case we have additional visitors today, I'll just summarize that long-term enrollment um, is inversely correlated with graduation in an English-only program. Going back to the main search page, um, here is how you would use the concentric filters in the dashboard. And we are grateful for the display that we are borrowing from Mead School District with their permission. Great looking data, Mead. Um, we're, we're very pleased with the, those numbers. And so we can readily see that you have almost no long-term enrollment and students regularly meet proficiency each year in your program. So to find this display, um, let's walk through the steps together. Starting in the column to the left, you'll enter information from top to bottom. In step one, select the district and school or set the school name field to district total if you wish to see your whole program. In step two, you'll, you will use the measure selector to choose the data you wish to see. Just below that, you'll find the chart selector, and this allows you to choose the data visualization that best answers questions you have about your district. Some data is available by school year, um, so you're able to select that option in the school year field. Moving over to the third column, you may refine your search by selecting comparison groups and filters. In the upper right hand area of the main search page, you'll find some very helpful tools. Um, View Original allows you to save a specific search display and revert back to it as you navigate the visualizations. This is an awesome tool um, because we, we don't want to start over every time we look at a detail within a search. It allows you to go back to the, the first search that you, you marked for that day. So you can set the alerts. Um, you can set alerts that will notify you when the data reaches uh, preset parameters. Um, you can also subscribe to regular data reports. There's also a tool for sharing a visualization with another user. And the download function is extraordinarily helpful because it allows you to download in a variety of formats, depending on where you will use this information. And you can mark visualizations with comments as well. And um, this, the marking them is a, it's a helpful annotation tool. So um, our plan for rolling out the dashboard is that we are going to have short tutorials and data challenges that we issue uh, a few times a month. Um, we find that it, doing one training where we try to teach all of the different ways that the data can be displayed to answer questions is, um, is not always the most effective way for us to learn how to use an application. And so for this dashboard, we are um, choosing to, um, to put small challenges and tutorials out there um, to teach different aspects of looking at the data in your program. So. Um, in order to support your familiarity with the dashboard, um, you will find these challenges in the bilingual education newsletter. And these will be short activities that will encourage you to use the dashboard for a limited and specific task. And this time I wanna challenge you to find your district's length of time and program disaggregated by grade level. Um, it's my opinion that it's the most helpful diagnostic visualization we have. So I wanna be sure it's in your hands. So the steps are listed here below for you to reference when you have time. And this, this PowerPoint will be posted on our webpage later so you can refer back to it. But step one, you would enter the name of your district and set the school name to district total. In step two, you would choose the length of time for the measure selector, single year for the chart selector, and 2019 for the school year. 
In step three, in the column to the right, you would find the select comparison group uh, and set that to grade level. And that should give you the display that looks like this one below. Remember that you can download what you find in a variety of formats. So choose the format that is the most helpful in sharing this data with a colleague. Finally, I wanted to provide some contact information in case you have questions. Um, please do feel welcome to reach out to us. Um, it is honestly the most delightful part of our work when we're able to connect with our districts. Um, you are all working so hard right now and we wanna make sure that you feel supported in that work. Um, so I will, um, as Patty did, take a moment to say thank you for all you're doing for kids and communities right now. And I'll take a look in the chat and see if we have some questions. Hi, Amy, there were a couple of questions um, that I realize now that I was responding to incorrectly. So I'll just um, co cover them here if I have a minute. Sure, absolutely. Um, so there was a question in the chat um, about the Tableau server application not appearing in the EDS list. Um, if the Tableau server does not appear in your applications list within EDS, uh, it's an access issue at your local level. Um, so you would need to request that access through your district security administrator. If you do not know who the district security administrator is in your district, I posted a link out into chat that you can use and that will identify who all of the, the district security administrators are across the state. So you can use that to identify who in your district you need to request that access through. If you get into the Tableau server and your organization is not showing up as a dropdown ability, it's more than likely an issue of you don't have access to that organization. And so the way the security is set up within here to protect student privacy is you have to, if you have access up to a district level, you have access to every school within that district. But if your district security administrator gives you access to a single school, you only have access to the school and not the district level data. And so if you are only seeing a single school or maybe two schools and you, you should have um, district level access, that's another piece that you can work with your district security administrator um, to make sure that you have access to the correct organizations. And if you don't, follow up with that student information uh, email address on the screen right now, and we can help uh, investigate why you're seeing what you're seeing. I'm just scrolling through the chat right now to see if there are any, uh, any other questions that we haven't addressed. We give people ample time to ask questions. Um, Here's a question about the interpretation of the long-term enrollment or um, let me back up, the median length of time and program. Um, so Megan has asked for interpreting this data, would that mean, for example, EL students in seventh grade have been in the program an average of 5.57 years? So let's look at that screen again. So it's seventh grade. I it's four point five seven years um, in this display, Megan. I hope that's helpful. 
Cindy has asked, will I have to contact each district for my ESD 171 region? Cindy, I do understand that um, it is gonna be limited due to confidentiality um, of student information. Um, because this, this, this tool provides student level data, um, I understand that you would need to go through the district um, who has the permissions for the individual students that you're looking for. Um, and Sandra has asked, um, I don't see data for the 2018-2019 school year. Um, Sandra, I, I, I'm wondering if um, under, um, under this, um, under the school year, if you're, you're not seeing it in the, men, the menu in that middle column, um, maybe you and I can follow up and, and I can get a better picture of, of what your question or concern is. A question for Patty. Um, it says Janice is asking, I was at, actually asking how long we can expect to wait for scores from the online screener. Um, first grade and up with the Elpa 21, we are to expect scoring to take seven days, which means we really only have three days to do the screening rather than 10. And Amy, I'm not sure if they were, if the question was around the kindergarten screening, um, that one did come in the Q&A box. But if it if you're wondering about the WIDA screener for kindergarten, uh, that is hand scored by the test proctor. So your scoring is immediate. I, I would also point out that there um, if there isn't a requirement to have the score within 10 days, um, state law drives that 10 day time frame. And that is that they are given the, the screener and the home language survey is completed within that 10 days. The score is not required to be reported within the 10 days, but the date that the test was taken should reflect that it was within 10 days, if that, in case that's helpful. Patty Sherry um, has a question. Um, if the WIDA online screener is hand scored. And um, Sherry, I'm, I'm still learning the WIDA screeners, so I'm not so familiar with the online, um, but I, I don't know the mechanism of it, but I do know that scores are within 24 hours. So um, more to come on that. <laughs> you won't have to wait long for scores. That's what I do know. And then Amy, there's a question for you in the chat from Debbie. She says on the notes tab, can you explain how the exited within five years numerator is figured? I, I believe that's a question for Lance. So I would defer that to him. And I, I already marked that down, uh, Debbie, so thanks for that. And I will get back to you um, with an answer for that. So we have a little more information from Sandra. It says, under the school year drop down, these are the only available selections. Well, I think the 2019 is going to be the 1819 data, um, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure why it's listed as a single year, <laughs> but yeah. I think that, that is the what that number reflects. That that's correct, Amy. Again, I don't know why. <laughs> I'll look into why those are um, showing oddly, um, but 2019 there is the 2018 19 school year. Thank you, Lance. 
Lisa, Justice has a question, um, and, and we might ask Lance this one. If it says no items under district name and school name, does that mean I need to talk to the access manager in my district? More than likely, yes. Um, I, if you want to send an email um, directly to us with kind of that screenshot, I can look more into that. I would only expect to see that if you have uh, ESD level access and access to no districts or schools. Um, so there might be something else going on there. You may be able to hit at the on the top toolbar of the server. There is a button that says uh, revert. It's kind of on the left hand side. Um, if you hit that, that refreshes everything on the page to kind of start over. And that might um, populate something for you in that district or school name field. And if it doesn't, um, again, follow up with us with an email directly and we can help troubleshoot that more. Tracy is asking to gain access to the Tableau server in EDS, what do I ask for specifically so that the security manager knows what I'm talking about? And I believe you would ask for um, district level permissions for the Title III data dashboard. So you can ask them, um, I will post in the chat the exact user role that the district administrator would um, need to grant access for for you. Um, the, the user role can be granted for or any organization. So whether it's a district or individual school, whatever level you're at, but the user role um, will be the one that you would request specifically. And I'll put that in the chat in just a second. Rebecca is asking, is the data for this current school year? Um, Lance, do you want to address that one? It, it's the, there's, there is some, um, but some data is suppressed currently. Yeah, I would, I would kind of defer this question a little bit to our assessment team. Um, I know with the school facility that closures that occurred, um, late last winter um, due to the pandemic. There is some, some data that was completed prior to everything closing, but others that weren't. And so they're being strategic um, to make sure that they aren't releasing any data that is not um, valid or complete. And so um, you can follow up with them directly, uh, the assessment analysts at k12.wa.us. Um, and they can provide um, that, that information for you. Dan is asking if there is a report that shows length and program by school district showing all school districts. Um, that's something we can see at OSPI, but it's not available um, at the district level because um, this is not a public facing tool and it has student level um, data that is visible in some of the displays. And so um, if you were interested in looking at um, just that display, we would probably um, take a screenshot of it if it's um, information that can be made publicly available, um, like I have in the presentation with the display from Mead School District. Um, but we wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be able to do that independently at the district level because of that student level information. Nancy is asking a question about why it takes so long for scores to get reported to EDS. Um, and I think that that's a question for our, um, our student information team, the data ops team. Um, I, there, I know that it's communication with the vendor is part of that, um, but I, I think that there are also additional considerations. 
Um, so we would direct you to the um, that customer service email. Nancy is asking, how do we get the district security managers changed under our district name in EDS? Um, Lance, is that something you know about or could speak um, to? I, I believe that is reported directly from um, the districts to our IT team. Um, it's not something I'm well aware of, but I can get you an email address to our IT team um, our customer support team in IT that would be able to walk you through how to get that update. Debbie Lewis is asking if you can access the detailed data that's used to calculate the summary data. Um, you can, in your district's display, you can see the student level information um, that, um, that's linked to the aggregates. I'm not entirely sure that we can say you could answer any question that you might have about those details with what is available, but um, so the answer is probably mostly. So I see Sherry is asking, um, which Tableau report is this? Um, she says, I'm an EDS and Tableau, and I find ELL data, but not this report. So this is the Title III data dashboard. And Sherry, um, this um, PowerPoint, when we post this, the slide deck from today, it has a step-by-step -step of how to get to this display if you have the permissions um, to, to access um, the Tableau server. You, you should be able to follow those. If not, I would reach out to your, um, your data person in, in your, at your district level. Teresa is asking, um, are we able to see how we compare to the state averages? I believe that you are. Um, I, uh, I don't, let, let me ask Lance. Yeah. <laughs> no, at, at this time, unfortunately you're not. Um, it's a functionality we're trying to build into the system, but because the secure, because it is student level data um, that is populating this dashboard, if we make state data available, you have access to every student in the state and all of the information for those students. And so one of our, um, one of our work products right now is trying to figure out how we can make um, that state level and make possibly other district level data um, available to you within the secure portal without compromising the security of the underlying data. Um, for students. So it is something we are working on, but it's not something that you have access to right now. If a district is um, interested in knowing what those numbers are for the state, that's something that supervisors could collect that information and give you the numbers. Um, the specific display, if you were to request it, we would have to look at the display to see if there was any confidential information in there. Um, and by confidential, I just mean that it um, would be a small enough group to identify individual students or actual student scores um, or, or other identifying information. Um, but we would, we would be able to provide the numbers of, um, of those state averages um, for your use.
Dan is asking a question. Is there a report that shows length and program by school district showing all school districts? Dan, we're not able to do district to district comparison um, at this time um, because of that student level data. Um, and there, there are some, um, some considerations when comparing districts that, um, that also kind of have contributed to, um, to the decision that that um, is not available in this tool. Jennifer is asking, um, she says, I don't see our school listed even with the district toggled. I apologize if you have discussed this already. Um, Jennifer, I wonder if you might um, send me an email afterwards and I can follow up um, and make sure that, um, that I can see what you're asking about and we can kind of troubleshoot that. Linda Host has a question for Lance. Um, do you know what setting to print the reports in their entirety? I'm trying to do length on of time and program and it's only capturing some of the grade levels. I have tried automatic and 60%. I am not sure, but I can look right now and see if I can find a quick answer for you. Which which report was it trying to print? I think she's hoping to print all of the displays for her district. Um, Linda, if you could provide a little more uh, direction on that, we'll try to give you a specific and helpful answer. Tiffany says, I am looking at the data for our high school under fast facts. It says 65% of students are making progress. When I click on it, it says 46 out of 70. Uh, we only have 22 students in program at the high school. It seems to be pulling data for languages spoken for this graphic. It, uh, if you can send that information to the uh, email address, we can investigate um, what, what's happening there um, to troubleshoot that one. Um, Tess is asking, the report you're showing right now, does it only include students currently receiving services or those that have tested out too? So for example, your screen shows 4.19 years is the average length of time in program for fourth graders. Does that only include current fourth graders or does it include fourth graders who tested out too? I feel like we would need to include fourth graders who have tested out in order for this graph to be helpful or useful. So Tess, my understanding is that it is the, that particular business rule is the, uh, the display of the students in program um, and how long they have been in program. You can visit the business rules um, uh, by following those tabs to the upper left of the Tableau workbook. So Linda has provided some more information on her questions. She's looking to print her entire data report for her district. And it says it is only printing in PDF grades six through 12 and not the primary pages. Linda, that might be um, a question for customer support at k12.wa.us.
Um, Karina is asking, will the next program update on May 7th contain the same information? Neither of my ELL TOSAs were able to attend this meeting. Um, we, this information will be posted. It'll be recorded and posted on uh, the bilingual education page. We have an area where our um, presentations and resources are located. Um, the next time that we talk about the, um, the dashboard, we'll go over some of the main features of it, and there will be another um, walkthrough of a different data display. Um, so that would be uh, the next time we do a presentation. And I'm sorry, without seeing the whole calendar, um, I don't know if that will be included on the May 7th presentation. Um, I, I need to look at the um, the whole calendar to, to see when our next data dashboard presentation will take place. And I just wanted to mention that this PowerPoint, um, as well as the presentation, it's being recorded and is uh, right now the, the slide deck is posted, but the recording will also be posted. And I'll drop that link in the chat box. So if you have people that uh, might want to listen to the recording, it's available. I see that um, Jolyn has pointed out that the last slide in the deck has opportunities to connect with your bilingual education team. So I'm going to move or we'll navigate to that slide. Um, so this this is the slide that she's referring to. And do please do feel welcome to reach out to us. If you suspect that there's a problem with um, access or the technology or um, the, the data content itself, um, that would best be directed to customer, the customer service email um, that goes to our assessment analyst team. Um, if you, are, you have questions about what the displays tell you about your program, and whether or not um, a conclusion that you might base on these data displays would be a valid conclusion, you can reach out to your program supervisors and um, we'll, we'll be able to talk to you about why we asked for the display in that manner and um, that specific data element um, so that you'll have the information you need to make meaningful use of the tool. Um, this question is probably for Patty, going back to the WIDA screener, if we have a student that's new to our school district that's registering before school starts, will the WIDA screener be available for this student in August um, 7th through 9th grade? Right. Thank you for your question, Yvonne. And I noticed Tracy also had that question. And I'm going to confirm that before I answer it. Um, so it's, we are um, going through the contract process right now with WIDA and I'll find out exactly when that screener grades one through 12 will be, avail will be available. So um, we'll put that out in an announcement, but also on April 23rd, uh, we have a bilingual education office hours or office hour rather, but it will be um, completely focused on the WIDA transition. So we'll have answers to questions like that in particular that we'll be able to share out on April 23rd. And as we learn more of these details, we'll put those out in an announcement as well. Thank you. Um, so I see that we're um, coming up on uh, our time and we're gonna, in just a moment, um, 
transfer the presentation over to our migrant team. Um, I wanted to thank um, Lance Cisco and his team um, for, um, for creating this tool. It was a project that took many months um, of, of work to assemble and we're very pleased with it. Um, and so I wanna thank you specifically for um, helping our field to uh, provide the best services we can and the specialized environments that our students need to have an equitable uh, opportunity at an education. So thank you for that, Lance, um, and to thank you to your team. I also want to thank our um, district directors, coordinators, teachers, and paras in the field for the hard work you're doing right now. This has been a very difficult year, and I just want to make sure we don't miss an opportunity to say it matters. It's very important to our kids, and we see it, and um, we are just so grateful um, that, that you're doing that work for uh, our students in Washington. So I will go ahead and turn this over to our migrant team. And um, oh, just one more thing, I'll say um, the questions in the chat and Q&A, um, we'll follow up on any of those that were um, entered afterwards and make sure that we connect with you if you have a question in there. Thank you.